I now get the floor to His Excellency Elmar Maharam Oglu Mamadyarov, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Azerbaijan. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, Excellencies, first of all, of course, I would like to congratulate His Excellency Mr. Tijani Mohammed Bandi on his assumption of the presidency of the General Assembly and to wish him every success in his upcoming important duties as a president of General Assembly. Mr. Mohammed Bandi may count on full support of the Republic of Azerbaijan during his tenure. My delegation is also grateful to Her Excellency Ms. Maria Fernandez Espinosa Garcia for her tremendous work in presiding over the Assembly during the 73rd session. We are also grateful to the United Nations Secretary General, His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, for his efforts toward reforming the organization and making it more integrated, effective, and efficient. Mr. President, the threats and challenges facing the world today demand our joint efforts to strengthen the international legal order and to rekindle faith in multilateralism and confidence in the United Nations. Preserving the values of multilateralism and international cooperation, which underpin the United Nations char uh, Charter, is fundamental to promote and support the three pillars of our organization, namely peace and security, development, and human rights. It is our common duty, therefore, to promote and support a reformed, reinvigorated, and strengthened multilateral system. The objective of ensuring a peaceful, just, and prosperous world is hardly achievable if universally accepted fundamental values, norms, and principles are disregarded, so as to whitewash aggression and other illegal actions. The implementation of resolutions adopted by the principal organs of the United Nations, namely United Nations Security Council and United Nations General Assembly, as well as accountability, acquire significant importance in that connection. Apparent disregard of the Security Council resolutions containing binding demands cannot constitute an accepted practice in the Council's discharging of its primary responsibility for the maintaining, maintenance of international peace and security. The United Nations, which was established to prevent war and human suffering by binding all its members, members through a common rule-based order, plays a central role in ensuring that all involved in addressing peace and security concerns uphold the uniform application of the purposes and principles of our organization. Support for that role of the United Nations is crucial in maintaining peace, stability, and sustainable development. Mr. President, one of the strongest advocates of multilateralism in the contemporary international relations system is the non-aligned movement. And we are looking forward to hosting the next summit of head of states and government of non-aligned movement, which will be held in Baku next month on the 25th and 26th of October 2019. Throughout its history, the non-aligned movement has played a fundamental role in strengthening international peace and security by promoting adherence to its Bandung principles. The chairmanship of Azerbaijan will provide another impetus for advancing the founding principles of the movement, the 65th anniversary of which will be celebrated in 2020. Mr. President, as we continue our path of implementing 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, we need to regularly test ourselves to identify the extent of, to which we are delivering on our commitments. Sustainable efforts backed by adequate resources are essential to secure a bright future for our people and ensure that no one is left behind. Yesterday, Azerbaijan became a member of the Group of 77 and stands ready to actively contribute to its work on ensuring sustainable development through the promotion of economic cooperation. Azerbaijan has maintained its sustainable economic growth and continued its consistent efforts to improve the living standards of 
of our citizens. Through successful implementation of economic development programs over the last 15 years, Azerbaijan's economy has developed at a record pace on a global scale with an increase of gross domestic product by 3.3 times. During the same period, industrial production has grown by 2.6 times, exports by 4.7 times, and foreign exchanges reserves by 24 times, amounting up to 45 billion US dollars. Social sphere has always been in the spotlight. This year, the government adopted a social package that covers more than 4 million people out of 10 million populated country. Investments in social sphere over the last 15 years resulted in the poverty rate in the country to be reduced from 49% in 2004 to less than 5% in 2019. Over the same period, the unemployment rate was, has dropped from 10.6%, less than 5%. The 2019 World Bank Doing Business Report lists Azerbaijan in the top 10 most reforming countries in the world. Favorable business climate in the country brought about 250 billion US dollars investment to the Azerbaijan economy over the last 15 years, half of which, by the way, attributed to foreign investments. Azerbaijan contributes to regional development efforts through the promoting connectivity, bringing together con continents and creating a platform for mutually beneficial cooperation. Despite being a landlocked country, Azerbaijan has transformed into an important international transportation hub. Azerbaijan attached particular importance to the promotion of cultural diversity. All ethnic and religious groups live in Azerbaijan in peace and harmony. In recent years, we have hosted several major global events and launched a number of initiatives aimed at strengthening dialogue and mutual understanding. Among such initiatives is the World Forum on Intercultural Dialogue, which has been recognized by General Assembly and the Secretary General as a key global platform for promoting intercultural dialogue. Having one of the youngest age distributions among the European countries, the government places special emphasis to the full realization of the future generation's potential by offering them a quality education and decent job opportunities. A new employment strategy of Azerbaijan for 2019 and 2030 has set 13 targets for 2030. These targets aim to reduce the unemployment among young people, improve vocational education and training, and increase employment in small and medium enterprises. Azerbaijan continues to strive in ensuring gender equality and empowering women in public and social life. I am pleased to announce that we are currently developing a national, national action plan for the implementation of United Nations Security Council Resolutions 1325 on women, peace, and security. As an emerging donor country, Azerbaijan continues to render international humanitarian and development assistance to a number of countries through the Heydar Ali Foundation and Azerbaijan's International Development Agency. Particular attention is being paid to addressing the needs of developing and least developing countries. The existential threat of climate change is becoming more real with every hurricane, world, fear, world fire, uh, cent uh, centimeters of sea level rise. Azerbaijan is highly sensitive to the effect of climate change and is already facing its negative impacts such as floods, droughts, heat stresses, and others. My country is a party to a major international agreements on climate action, including United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the Kyoto Protocol, and the Paris Agreement. The national policies and strategies have been adopted to be in line with those international instruments. The government has taken important steps to bringing carbon dioxide emissions to a minimum and has pledged to reduce it by 35% by 2030. Mr. President, it is well known that the aggression of the, by the Republic of Armenia against the Republic of Azerbaijan has resulted in the occupation of almost one-fifth of the territory of my country and expulsion of more than one million Azerbaijanis from their homes and priorities and properties. The unresolved conflict continues to undermine international and regional peace and security. 
very important that since the last the last year's general debate, no progress has been achieved in the political settlement of the conflict. Despite direct contacts between the leaders of the two countries and the meeting of foreign ministers over the last two years, the apparent lack of genuine interest by the leadership of Armenia impedes the conflict resolution process. On the contrary, Yerevan, both in words and deeds, derails the process and sabotage the efforts for finding a soon as peaceful settlement. The recent statements by the Prime Minister of Armenia and the members of his government leave no doubt as to their annexationist intentions in clear disregard of international law and relevant Security Council resolutions. In his statements delivered recently, including at the General Assembly uh, at the United Nations uh, here in New York, the Prime Minister of Armenia publicly disclosed his government's strategy in negotiations, that is to, def to defend, I'm quoting, to defend the outcomes of the war, end of quote. In fact, what the leadership of Armenia intends to defend is an acceptable status quo created through the unlawful use of force and the resulting occupation of internationally recognized territories of Azerbaijan, accompanied by heinous crimes of, against humanity, war crimes, act of genocide committed against Azerbaijani civilian population and totally ethnic cleansing of the occupied territories of all non-Armenians. In its unanimously adopted resolution, namely 822, 853, 874, and 884 of 1993, the United Nations Security Council condemned the use of force against Azerbaijan, the occupation of its territories, the attacks on civilians, and the bombardment on, of inhabitant areas reaffirmed respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Azerbaijan, the inviability of international borders, and the inadmissibility of use of force for the acquisition of the territories. In response to the territorial claims and forcible actions, the Security Council reconfirmed in its resolutions that Nagorno-Karabakh region is an, an integral part of Azerbaijan and demanded the immediate, complete, and unconditional withdrawal of the occupying forces from all the occupied territories. The resolutions of the General Assembly and numerous decisions and documents adopted by other authoritative international organizations are framed along the same line with the United Nations Security Council resolutions. However, key Security Council demands, unfortunately, remain unimplemented. Instead, despite early warnings and condemnation by the international community and against the background of ongoing efforts towards the political settlement of the conflict, deliberate actions are being carried out in the occupied territories of Azerbaijan with a view to changing its demographic, cultural, and physical character. Such actions include, among others, implantation of settlers, destruction and appropriation of historical and cultural heritage, exploitation and pillage of, of and illicit trade in assets, natural resources, and other wealth in the occupied territories. These actions constitute a clear violation of the 1949 Fourth Geneva Convention on the Protection of Civilians in Time of War and Additional Protocol uh, 1 of 1977, amounting to war crimes and entailing state and individual criminal responsibility under international law. It is abundantly clear that such policy and practices can in no way be reconciled with the objectives of achieving a peaceful resolution of the conflict, thus necessitating the urgent action by the United Nations and the wider international community for defending the values, norms, and principles of the rule-based and civilized interstate relations as it is tried in the UN Charter. The primary objective of the ongoing peace process is to eliminate the consequences of the war unleashed by Armenia, thereby ensuring the immediate, complete, and unconditional withdrawal of the occupying forces from all the occupied territories of Azerbaijan, as it was indicated in the UN Security Council resolutions. The restoration of the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan within its internationally recognized borders and the return of the forcibly displaced person to their homes and properties, as it was again enshrined in the UN Security Council resolutions. The achievement of that objective is a must and not compromise. Azerbaijan remains committed to the earliest political settlement of the conflict. At the same time, 
the negotiations cannot last forever and imply continuation and sustenance of the situation created as a result of unlawful use of force, occupation, and ethnic cleansing. Nor can they prejudice the realization of inherent right of self-defense under the UN Charter and international law. Rather than wasting time on attempts to mislead the international community and its own people, Armenia must drop its losing attempts to prolong the unsustainable status quo and faithfully comply with its international obligations. The earlier Yerevan realizes the lack of any prospect of its destructive political agenda, the sooner all population of the region will be able to benefit from peace, stability, and cooperation, and the better will be chances for Armenia to overcome serious political, economic, and social burden it is facing due to the aggressive and hostile policy in the region. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Azerbaijan.